Hello everyone, my name is Aaron Standard, and today we're gonna to talk about how to integrate Akka.net and ASP.NET Core. So how can we run both of these technologies side by side inside the same .NET Core or .NET 5 Plus process? Well, the formula for integrating these two, uh, this typically comes up if you already have a user-facing web API or an application, and you need to be able to either publish data to Akka.net, or you want to be able to request data from Akka.net, and you need that in order to perform some type of real-time processing inside your web application. Well, for that formula, you might also want to consider integrating with an Akka.net cluster if your application is distributed and you want to go ahead and have a you know, fault-tolerant, highly available way of partitioning and distributing state. So the formula for how we integrate Akka.net and ASP.NET Core is first, we're gonna start Akka.net inside an iHosted service. And we have a pretty detailed YouTube video that kind of breaks down all the ins and outs of how to do that. So we're not gonna rehash all that here. You can go ahead and check out that video. We're gonna include a link to it in the show notes. Um, but after you've encapsulated Akka.net inside that iHosted service, for any ASP.NET to Akka.NET actor interactions, we wanna go ahead and create a service interface. Uh, something that's gonna go ahead and abstract away the underlying actor system. And that interface is going to have a concrete implementation uh, built into the iHosted service that we're creating where all of our actors are going to live. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and bind our Akka.NET service as a singleton implementation of that service interface in dependency injection. That way, all of our controllers or our routes or our signal or hubs can all go ahead and fetch a copy of that dependency using the built-in uh, DI system inside the uh, iHost builder. We're going to go ahead and use that to talk to Akka.net without needing to necessarily know that we're talking to Akka.net. That way we can maintain a good separation of concerns and we can still get that very snappy real-time responsiveness out of the Akka.net actors that are running inside our process. So let's take a look at a little demo of how all of this fits together. All right, so for our demo on how to integrate ASP.NET Core with Akka.NET, we're going to go ahead and use the uh, cluster.webcrawler repository inside Petabridge's GitHub organization. Uh, this is a pretty popular repository for learning all sorts of different things about Akka.NET, in particular, how to work with Akka Streams and Akka.Cluster. But uh, for this particular video, we're going to go ahead and pull up the source, and we want to take a look at the webcrawler.web project. In here, we have a standard sort of ASP.NET Core application. Uh, we're running on .NET 5, source of our project file here. You can see that we're running the Microsoft.NET SDK.web. This kind of pulls in all the ASP.NET dependencies behind the scenes. Uh, the only explicit ASP.NET package we actually need to install is for SignalR. So the Microsoft.ASP.NET.SignalR package, uh, this might change to something else in the future possibly. And then we're gonna go ahead and include Akka.Cluster, uh, Akka.HealthCheck, Akka.Bootstrap.Docker. These are all kind of uh, third-party libraries. And then we're also gonna go ahead and include the Akka.Dependency Injection library as well. And this is gonna play a little role in how we get Akka.NET to talk to SignalR. Now, if we take a look at program.cs, we have a pretty straightforward stock ASP.NET Core host builder. We're gonna go and build a web host, we're gonna go ahead and use Kestrel, and we're gonna use a startup class to go ahead and configure most of our dependency injections and everything else. So let's take a look at that startup class. All right, so if I scroll down, we're gonna go ahead and configure some of our normal ASP.NET stuff. So we're gonna add controllers with views since we're actually using a controller with a view in this sample. We're gonna turn on SignalR. And then here's where things get interesting. Uh, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create this little crawl hub helper class. This is for integrating with SignalR. And this crawl hub helper takes an iHub context. If you wanna have a way of being able to call SignalR from the outside, uh, you can go ahead and get this from the DI container inside your ASP.NET application that has SignalR enabled. And this will allow you to talk to a hub of this type. So this gives you a context for being able to uh, send messages out over the WebSocket back to your JavaScript or whatever client. So that's what our crawl hub helper does. A little bit further down, you're gonna notice we have a singleton of type iSignalR processor, and the backing implementation for that is our Akka service. You'll also notice that our Akka service is a hosted service down here, 
and we're going to go ahead and have the service provider get a required service reference for this iSignalR processor, and we're going to convert that via casting back into an ACA service. So this first SignalR registration allows us to go ahead and expose the iHosted services functionality to the other parts of our application. This call down here, what we call ad hosted service, is what actually starts the actor system behind the scenes. So we're following Microsoft's own guidance here. This is how you can create an a I hosted service that runs in the background that still needs to be accessed by the foreground parts of your application, which in this case includes uh, the ASP.NET controllers and the SignalR hubs. So we're going to set all that up. And then a little bit further down, uh, we're going to go ahead and call app.use endpoints. We're going to map our controller routes, and then we're going to map our crawl hub. So our crawl hub, if I take a look at it, our crawl hub takes a dependency on this iSignalR processor. And every time we receive a start crawl message, so this is a, a method that's being invoked from JavaScript, and it's sending a message down SignalR that is being invoked inside our hub. So this gets called from the UI, whereas the other methods we saw in the crawl hub helper, these send messages back up to the client. So that's because SignalR is a duplex communication channel. Well, let's take a look at where the crawl hub's uh, dependency, this iSignalR processor, actually gets implemented. Nick gets implemented inside our ACA service. So this is following kind of the same formula uh, we use for creating hosted services in our other video. Uh, we're gonna create a little ACA service here. We're gonna go ahead and stick our SignalR actor into a little private field. And after we go ahead and initialize our actor system, and notice we're using the uh, service provider setup here uh, to go ahead and pass in our service provider. That's uh, the service provider is where all of your bound dependencies in your DI container all get stored. And so you can go ahead and fetch any of the services your system requires as a dependency from the little DI container uh, right here. So we're gonna merge these two setups together, the bootstrap setup and the DI setup. We're gonna pass that into our actor system. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and call service provider.4 on our actor system. And we're gonna basically use this to create uh, a dependency injection enabled sort of actor instance, the SignalR actor. And the SignalR actor takes some arguments from DI. It also takes some arguments uh, directly from this method here. So in particular, we need a reference to this actor. This actor is responsible for essentially forwarding commands throughout the rest of the ACA.NET cluster. Since the input goes in through the very top of SignalR and the rest of the A cluster produces all the output, which will eventually get streamed back and sent back via that SignalR hub context we saw earlier. So this SignalR actor right here, if we take a look at it, uh, takes a DI dependency, this crawl hub helper. So every single time we receive a message that needs to be published back out to SignalR, we're gonna go ahead and publish that via this crawl hub helper. So that's how we're gonna go, we're gonna go ahead and establish some uh, two-way binding of dependencies between SignalR and ACA.NET. And this is going to work without a hitch. Now, I've already compiled uh, this application into a bunch of Docker containers. Uh, you can do that if you clone the solution by typing build.command docker. But I'm gonna go ahead and use the docker compose file that's in here to spin up a little local network of all these different services. And we're gonna go ahead and take it out for a spin and see everything work in action here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull up, I think it's a local host, 8808, there we go. So we've got our web crawler of doom. We're gonna go ahead and crawl, let's say the petabridge.command website. And looks like we can see some messages that got sent from SignalR and some output coming back from the rest of the actors inside our cluster. So lo and behold, that's how you can go ahead and integrate ACA.NET and ASP.NET, not, uh, and that's how you can integrate ACA.NET and ASP.NET together rather easily just using the Microsoft.extensions.hosting abstractions and a little bit of dependency injection. So if you want to go ahead and get a head start being able to implement that type of ACA.NET plus ASP.NET integration inside your own applications, uh, Petabridge has actually produced a couple of built-in .NET new templates that you can use. All you have to do is run this command to go ahead and install the latest version of these templates on your machine. And once that's available, you can go ahead and do .NET new PBACA web 
and then you just pass in the name of your application. And this will go ahead and scaffold a basically brand new Aka.NET plus ASP.NET application that has all this configured for you already. And you can go to this link down below here uh, to go ahead and take a look at the full source code for all these templates if you wish. So that'll do it for today's video. If you have any additional questions, please leave them in the comments or reach out to us in Gitter chat. Thank you very much.